Uh, last week, we introduced a brand new series called Marked, and we talked about how we are marked by God no matter what you've done, no matter the things you said, that God has still a past, that God still has a purpose for you. There's nothing you can do to separate the love of God from you. And so I preached that last week, and so this week I'm going to get a break, and I'm going to have Isabella go ahead and preach week two to you guys. So go yeah. ahead and just give her your full attention, y'all. Hey guys, how are you guys doing? You guys good? Fantastic. Really? Yeah. That's yeah, good. Okay, so you know, a part of talking about Mark, we talk about purpose. Now, it was really funny that we kind of, that this was like the series for this week, because kind of recently something, a little, a little happened to me. I don't want to give too much detail on it, so I'm going to explain this as best as possible. So I would say it was like a month ago, right? And um, I was so on fire for God this one week. I was just on fire for him. My, my spiritual life grew so much that week. My love for the church, my love for serving, my love for worship grew. Woo! I mean, to this day, like, <laughs> worship, like, my desire for worship is just crazy. You can do that some more. You know, sometimes it's going to be like, mm, you know, I really just want to worship. Like, I'll do that super randomly. You know, <laughs> you know, it's weird. But, um, so, you know, I was at church. It was Tuesday. I was at church, and um, we had this thing uh it was like a team night thing that we had and if you know me you know that i am the youth worship assistant director at my church so you know that's for youth though but you know there's also singing with the adults which is like i guess you could say a little more like up there whatever you want to say and um you have to be 15 or older you know i'm finally 15 so i'm being trained up for that now and that day was my first day that i actually got to like sing with all the adults so you know i felt super cool and i was just like well i'm so cool i could sing with the adults <laughs> But um, something happened, and I basically had to choose between leading worship that day and doing something else. But it was such an easy option for me. Like, I was like, no, 100%, I want to worship. I want to stay and do worship. But these other people, they felt like, mm, this is more important. But I was like, <laughs> Lucas knows what I'm talking about. They felt like this was more important. And I was like, mm, no, I think this is really what I want to do. <sighs> it was... So, yeah, the, and I felt after that week, um, if I'm being so honest, because of that whole situation, I can't do anything at church on Tuesdays and Thursdays now because of that whole situation that happened. And after that happened, I felt like I felt like that was like a now or never situation. Like, either I step into this calling for worship now or God can't use me ever again or I'll never give, get a chance to be able to step into that calling ever again. But after talking with one of my um, youth leaders at my church, shout out to Keisha, I was talking with her, and she told me this one thing that has stuck with me since then, and it's, um, if God, if it's God's will and if it's God's plan for you, nothing can stop it. So before we get more into it, let's just, our heads, close our eyes, and let's just pray. Dear Father, Lord, I thank you for this day, Lord, I thank you for this opportunity that you've given me, Lord, just to be able to, um, speak your word and speak your truth to every single person in here, Lord. I thank you for um, their willing heart that they have and their boldness that they have to be able to come in here with all these other students. Lord, I pray Lord, that you speak through me right now. Lord, I pray that it's your, it's your words and not mine. And I pray that you reach someone today. I pray that you bless the food and make an difference to our body. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm going to be reading a, a popular Bible story. I'm sure we all know it. It's um, Joseph, you know, Joseph, the little coat stuff. So <laughs> I think that's honestly one of my favorites, but probably mainly because of the movie. You guys have, have you guys seen the like, movie of Joseph? Yeah, the little cartoon one? It's so good. But that's probably why it's one of my favorites. But we're going to be in Genesis 37. We're going to start in verse 3, and we're going to move around a little bit. So it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made an ornate robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, Listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field, when suddenly my chief rose and stood upright, while your chiefs gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of this dream that he said. Then he had another dream, and he told his brothers, listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you have? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. So, you know, Joseph's telling his brothers about this dream, and they're all kind of just, like, super jealous of him. Which, you know, if I'm being honest, like, how could you not be a little jealous? You know, he's kind of favored by his father, but let's, let's, let's just keep going. Okay, so, you know, we skip down to verse 18, and um, in between this, you know, uh, Jacob, which is the father, he had sent Joseph to go check on his brothers, you know, while they were, like, watching the flock and stuff. And, you know, Joseph's walking over, you know, he's trying, he's trying to go see his brothers, and then they saw him. It says here in verse 18, they saw him in the distance. 
and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. That's just crazy. Because, you know, you can be jealous, but you know, I'm trying to Okay, but then they're like, here comes the dream where they said to each other, come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these seer sins, which is like a pit, and say that a furious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of him. And then, you know, one of the brothers, Reuben, he was like, mm, you know, let's not kill our brother. Let's just, you know, throw him in the pit. Like, you know, why would we want his blood on us? You know, on us. So then um, it says here, they um, took Joseph's robe and they threw him into the pit. And then later, while all the brothers were eating, their food and stuff, they see these, what, it's like Ishmaelites or something, they were coming, and they, they had all these, like, spices and stuff, and they were on their way to Egypt. So the brothers were like, or Judah, one of the brothers, he was like, hmm, you know, let's not kill our brother, let's just, you know, sell him to these people. So they sold, <laughs> they sold Joseph to um, these Ishmaelites, while, and they took him to Egypt. So if you skip down to chapter 39, Joseph has reached Egypt, and Potiphar, the captain of the guard, brought him from Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered, and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household, and he trusted him to take care of everything he owned. And, you know, um, this is when the story gets a little interesting. We're going to skip down a little more. And, you know, it says, um, now Joseph was a wealth built and handsome young guy. Okay, so, you know, Joseph's a little fine, you know. And um, I guess Potiphar's uh, wife also thought so. So, you know, she was like, hey, Joseph, you want to, like, you know, do something? But Joseph was like, um, no, Potiphar's my bestie. Like, well, why would I do that? You know, I am loyal. Uh, and Potiphar's wife did not like that. So she decided to lie. And, you know, she said, oh, my goodness, Joseph tried to do something to me. And, yeah, that was a lie. But Potiphar did not believe Joseph. So Joseph ended up being thrown into prison. So if you know the story, you know that um, in the story, you know, he's in prison, but then the guard actually puts him, like, head of and in charge of everything in the prison. You know, he's, like, he's up there again. And um, later in the story, um, Potiphar had a dream, right? And one of the prisoners, wait, when Joseph interpreted one of the prisoner's dreams, and the prisoner was sent back to go work for Potiphar. So whenever Potiphar needed his dream interpreted, they were like, oh, Joseph's still down there. Go get him. So they got Joseph, and they brought him to interpret Potiphar's dream. And he did that, and then Joseph was put over all of Egypt. He was in charge of all of Egypt. So that's the whole story of Joseph, if you didn't know it before. So we're going to kind of skip back to the beginning. And you know, um, so we're going to start with the brothers. The brothers were so jealous of Joseph that they literally tried to kill their brother. And you see that no matter what they tried to do, they actually ended up helping. They actually ended up helping ensure that God's purpose for Joseph would happen. You know, so there's so many people that are going to try to stop you and try to stop God's plan for you, stop God's calling for you, stop God's purpose for you. But little do they know that they're actually helping you. They're actually helping you get there. So no one, like I said in the beginning, no one can stop God's plan and God's purpose for you because you can't kill what God has already breathed life into. You can't kill what God has already marked. Whenever we are born, we are born with a purpose. God created us with a purpose. He has marked us with a purpose. And nothing can stop what God has already marked us with. Nothing can stop what God has already breathed life into. Nothing can stop what God has called us to do. So it's, whew, there's this thing. I don't remember where I heard it. But whenever I was putting this message together, it kind of came back to my mind. And it was, um, it was, it was, you, oh yeah, you had to go to the pit in order to make it to the palace. Before Joseph got to the palace, he had to go to the pit. If he didn't go to the pit, he would have never made it to the palace. Because the pit is where his purpose lied. That's where he found his purpose. So, you know, and whenever I was reading that, it kind of, earlier, this kind of came to my mind. I think God was putting some, these things on my heart. And he was just like, right now, as Christians, you know, we're living for God. But, you know, sometimes it can be hard and we feel like we're in the pit right now. But later, we have the kingdom ahead of us. We have the palace ahead of us. And, whew, it's good. It's good. <laughs> but we have the palace ahead of us. It seems hard. It feels like we're in the pit right now. It feels like our calling is dead, but God has breathed life into us. God has breathed life into our purpose. And he has the palace and he has treasures ahead waiting for us. And oh, it's just so good. Okay. So good. But um, I just want to say this to everyone in here, you know, that's following God and is on fire for God and you feel like you're in the wrong place. I want to let you know that you are not in the wrong place. It might seem like it's the wrong place for us, but it's the right place for God. That's the place where God wants us to be. 
And you'll see that later, it won't be in the palace later. It's all going to be worth it later. So push up our heads and close our eyes. Dear Lord, I thank you for the day, Lord. I thank you for the word you've given me, Lord. I pray that you spoke to someone today, Lord. I thank you for everyone in here. Their hearts, their hearts were open, Lord, to receive the word, Lord. I pray that they received it and they lived it. And I thank you for every single person in this room, God. I pray that you um, put your hand over them and you protect them, God. I thank you, Lord, that nothing and no one can stop your purpose for us, Lord. I thank you for the purpose that you've given every single one of us, Lord, that's so unique. And I thank you for everything that you have blessed us with, God. Um, I pray that you continue to protect us and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>